What's up, y'all? It is LTJ Reads. This is Throwing Light. And if you're not throwing light, you're not acting right. I am here for a special. It is actually a Thursday special, September 5th. We are going to be discussing Blue Weekend with my IML brother, Kevin Hamby. Um, so pretty much, this is a special. We're going to kick right into it. But remember, y'all, if you want to help support Throwing Light and uh, an uh, organization that helped inspire Throwing Light, please visit AshwellATX.org. That's Ashwell Sexual Health and Wellness. Uh, they provide services for our local community. They even have a food bank. Um, if you don't, are not in the need of the services, maybe you would like to donate, please visit the website. And they have opportunities to do that. They even have a food bank if you'd like to donate to that. All right, y'all, let's kick it back over to Kevin. Kevin, my IML brother. Since last time. Hey there, how are you? We had, I had you on in March. Um, yeah. A lot has changed. It's like six months later. A lot. Yeah, a lot has God, happened. right? And we've been to IML <laughs> now. So that's right, number forever. number one and number thirteen. <laughs> yes. So you know we we had quite a journey, I guess. Right. It's so cool though. It was cool because I guess I knew you. You've always like ever since I think I met you. I feel like you were Mister Financer. So you had your title for a, a minute. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? yeah. So it's interesting seeing you pass your uh, sash on, and then also passing it on to somebody I know that is going to be a very good sash on for you. Um, you know, our class, everyone's starting to give their sashes away. Isn't that crazy? A lot of us about my step down is going to be in October next month. So then, I mean, all the 20, yeah, crazy. Yeah, I'm, crazy looking, stuff. I'm looking forward to helping the next class. And so one thing that I'm going to be working on soon is just uh, putting together a collective of all of us that, that have gone to IML, whether it was last year or years before just to kind of get the Texas coalition of class of 2025 together um, so that we look organized and that we're all being like supported by the community of Texas, um, you know, just cheering them on. I feel like that is super important. So it's something I want to work on. Um, hopefully you'll join me and uh, we can make sure that we are showing a good class this next year. For sure. And I definitely want to make sure that the next Mr. Austin Eagle fits right in and, and is able to understand that we try to be a little close knit family here in Texas. You know, we we have yeah. a lot of competition coming from California. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was just about to say California. About, you know, because we had eight Texans. I think they had nine Californians and a lot. Of, you know, like, you know, it's just our activism is different in every state. But like, you know, yeah there were definitely powerhouses and you know california oh. to compete with you know totally. no it was michelle who came up to me and and he was like oh you're from texas how many did y'all bring and i said we brought eight and he goes oh we brought 12 and then he oh said, was it 12 wait was it 12 yeah. and 12 oh my god 12. think about that so i think a, I, can. <laughs> I know a quarter of the contestants I mean, in california exactly i think this year though we'll have if we had eight, we had three that didn't go this last year. So we should be pretty comparable to around 12. So I think if we can get everyone together and everyone going, um, I think it's going to be a really fantastic Texas takeover. For sure. I'm going to be rooting for us. Um, yeah. So I've got you here because we've got a big uh, event coming up and you and your Misfit family produced this event. People probably don't know that you also produce, uh, help produce a title contest. So you yes. have a title and now you actually produce a title. Um, so why don't you go ahead and tell sure. everybody what GLUE is, what it stands for, what's going on, what's sure. the competition, all the good stuff. Yeah. Well, um, if you don't know, um, the Misfits Houston have been around uh, in Houston for over 30 years. Um, we're probably one of the oldest Leather Levi groups um, in the state of Texas. So we've been around for quite quite some time. Um, one thing that um, we've done is we've started a fundraising, let's just say activity for our group that we're on, I think year 12. This is our 12th year of doing Glue Weekend. And uh, Glue stands for gear, leather, uniform, etc. cetera. And uh, it really started as a, as a, uh, conclusion to Misfits Ball. 
Um, we used to have something called Louis Weekend, and it happened after Mardi Gras, and it was called Louis Weekend, Let Us Entertain You. It ended, and so people wanted something big and fabulous to do, and so with Misfits thought, let's do something called Glue Weekend. And uh, it's a full weekend packed full of so much stuff, so much stuff. So uh, if you've been to Austin Kink Weekend, it's very similar, uh, but we're doing it in, in Houston. So it's it's a great event. Um, one of the highlights uh, of the weekend is um, Mr. Third Coast Leather Contest. And so our contest, I, I'm producing it. So if you haven't applied, please reach out and go to glueweekend.com, fill out your application and send it to me. But um, the really beautiful part about Mr. Third Coast Leather is that it encompasses all of the states that touch the Gulf Coast. So if you live in one of those states, um, Texas, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, uh, Louisiana, you are um, you're able to apply for the the title and represent the Gulf Coast region. So we're super excited to to offer this. Um, you know, Glue Weekend was on break for a couple years because of COVID and monkeypox and stuff. So uh, this will be our second year comeback. And um, we're also doing some other things, too. I'll share the kind of um, the uh, the uh, little advertisement here. So we have early bird passes right now uh, for $125. It runs until the 28th of September. And then after that is $175. Um, you get a run pin, a t-shirt, you get access to all the events. And I'll show you what those look like in a second. But the really great thing about um, the event is that it's also a fundraiser. So this year our chosen uh, beneficiary is Montrose Grace Place. And if you don't know what Montrose Grace Place is, they are a um, an at-risk shelter and um, activity center for at-risk youth uh, here in Houston, LGBTQ at-risk youth. So we're so thankful to have an organization like that here in Houston to help kids in need. That's been my platform when I was Mr. F uh, Fire Dancer is just raising money and awareness uh, for kids on the street. It's it's ridiculous that we still have to do that, but there's a lot of kids in need. So we've picked Montrose Grace Place. So a great a great thing to do. Um, so that's at and uh, I'm sorry. Um, Glue Weekend is October 11th through the 13th here in Houston, Texas, and you can find more information at glueweekend.com. And then um, just to talk to you a little bit about the schedule. Um, cause I was really anticipating sharing that with you. Um, we have a big cigar social uh, on Friday and the great thing about it, it's being hosted by National Leather Association, Houston chapter and national, I'm sorry, National Leather Association, San Antonio chapter as well. It's also being, uh, sponsored by, um, Heights Cigar Lounge, a really great guy named Paul runs the cigar lounge. He's also an associate member. He's going to have a custom cigar roller at the Cigar Social. So unheard of. I didn't even know that there was somebody here locally that does that. So uh, you can come in to the Cigar Social, have a free cigar rolled and enjoy um, the camaraderie and the smoke. <laughs> so that's going to be exciting. And that's Friday night, October 11th from 6 to 10. Um, Dawn's going to be on later with you. Uh, she's going to talk about educational classes. So I think we have 16. Um, she'll get into more of that with you. Um, I and that that's going to be a lot of, of the, uh, I will be one of the teachers too. Are you, what are you teaching? Yes. Um, I, <laughs> Kevin, I think I'm, teaching, <laughs> I think that I'm teaching sobriety class, sobriety class. Oh, good. Um, I okay, couldn't good. Remember, there's two and... classes I teach. One's on HIV shaming and one is on sobriety, but I think it's going to be that. While you're talking, I'll pull it up. And your additional class will be on attitude. So you said wait, making what? sure you <laughs> making sure you come with attitude. Of course. Why would not? Yes. Exactly. Teach the children. Um, and then we've got a wet and wild pool party at Club Houston. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. We do that every year. So I um, work with Kevin. So the class I'm teaching. Sure. Is re okay. The class I'm teaching is reclaiming your leather kink and sex life after addiction. 
Nice. I like yeah. that. I like that a lot. That's going to be very helpful. Every year we get really uh, creative and uh, really in depth into topics that I don't think people have been talking about and especially not here in Texas. So I'm excited that we have people like yourself and others that are very knowledgeable about these issues that we can share with each other. So good job on that. Definitely. Um, so also on Saturday, October 12th, we have the wet and wild pool party. So if you've never been to club Houston, um, when we have it there, it's, uh, it's a lot more fun. There's a lot more people and, um, it's, it's an exciting event. It's a private club. So you do have to pay a little bit to get in. Um, but they are donating those proceeds back to the misfits so that we can give those to Montrose Grace place. Um, and then something new this year that we are excited about is we are celebrating our Latinx, um, our Latinx brothers and sisters and siblings. Um, we are hosting a, a Latinx event. We've never done this before. It's in the afternoon from one to five, and it's hosted by our friend, uh, number two, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, one of our brothers, he's Mr. Rio Grande Valley uh, Leather 2024. And uh, we're also Rio Grande Valley Bears and San Antonio Leatherman are all hosting this fantastic Latinx um, social. And during the social, we're going to be showing a uh, documentary that was produced by, I think, um, David was second runner up this year at IML. Um, David um, helped produce this documentary that follows, um, I think about nine Latin gentlemen through the leather community and through the um, contest circuit in Los Angeles. So it should be really exciting. Um, and I'm excited that we are the third city to screen it. So it's already been to Mexico City and it's coming here next. That's so awesome. that's going to be a fun event. Mm -hmm. uh, we are serving tamales and tequila, of course. Uh, we have a tequila company coming in and uh, wonderful tamales from uh, a local place here in Houston that does some of the best tamales. So come out to that event. That's going to be a lot of fun. There'll be a pup social, of course. The contest, of course, is going to be that night, October 12th from 6 to 9. Um, that'll be uh, on stage at uh, Play, which is the new nightclub, um, still in the same location, but it is called Play now. And uh, that's going to be fun. If you haven't been to Mr. Third Coast Leather Contest, it's always very exciting. And the entertainment is very funny. So I'm excited to have those, those ladies back. Um, we'll be sashing our new one this year so uh come and see michael cole step down uh he's our current mr third coast leather just love him and uh it'll be fun to it'll be a fun contest uh later that night at 10 o'clock uh we have the misfits ball which is a traditional um kind of circuit party quote unquote you know ball this year our theme is night on olympus so we're going with an ancient Greek kind of theme, which means it's togas all the way. So make sure you don your toga. Make sure you wear it appropriately so there's nothing underneath. Misfits don't like underwear, so make sure you leave that at home. Uh, so it'll be at Rich's Houston. That's going to be a lot of fun. And that is hosted by Fire Dancers Dallas. Oh, I forgot to tell you that the Mr. Third Coast Leather Contest is hosted by... Uh, none other than your Austin Gears. So I'm excited to have Jacob down here uh, as one of our um, judges. And the judges will be released on Facebook, I think this evening or tomorrow. Um, we have seven. So uh, Misfits Ball, that's going to be a fun, fun uh, evening. And then uh, lastly, on Sunday, I told you this was a packed weekend. Lastly, Sunday, October 13th, uh, we have the Misfits Officers Brunch, and our keynote speaker is Barclay Barrios, who also goes by Leather Edge, who has a podcast um, that's a really, really great podcast, a lot of great leather information. Wonderful person. We're excited to have him this year. Um, it's a brunch, so it is, uh, you'll definitely need to get your ticket for that, Beffe style, but our illustrious Will 
um, we'll be making sure that um, the food is fantastic and the drinks are being poured. So, and then finally, it's uh, not goodbye, but we'll see you next year as our Sunday Fun Day Tea Dance. So that will be going on at Pause Next Door um, after the brunch. So, woo, it's a lot. <laughs> this is great. So it's going to be a great weekend. No, yeah. this is great. I'm so glad that you were able to go over the events like this. This is so good. This is great. Yeah. So what's it like putting why don't, why don't you tell everybody what's it like putting on a, a contest or actually a leather weekend? Yeah, well, producing a contest in a leather weekend, you know, it's leather. I think producing a weekend is a lot harder and a lot more stressful. You've got to rely on other people. You've got to delegate and, you know, you've got to be super organized. It's not for the faint of heart. And luckily we have a platform of history to stand on. So, um, you know, we're hoping that every year we make it better and better. And it's a great experience for our participants and people who buy tickets. Um, it's a national well-known event. So um, that's really exciting too. It's made a name for itself. But what I really enjoy is producing the contest, just being a title holder. You know, I understand the ins and outs and I understand the pressures of the contestants. And I understand kind of the aftermath, you know, you and I both went to IML and we kind of had that um, to deal with that aftermath after that huge contest. And so we both kind of understand, you know, what people go through, but we also understand, you know, it's not just wearing the sash and holding the title, but it's what you do with it. Um, it's the magic that you make after you win your title. You know, what are you going to do with that title and who are you representing? So, you know, I think longer the days of people just winning the title because of what they look like, I think now it's all about a purpose and a cause. I mean, we saw that at IML for firsthand, how many people had some sort of cause that they were representing. So producing it, you know, is a, is a challenge. You've got to get judges. It's very political. You've got to make sure that you're checking all the boxes when you select your judges, you know people of color, trans, um, you know, what are their backgrounds? What are their issues? Um, you know, so you're looking at all of that. You have to make sure that you're representing um, everyone in our community. And that can be a challenge because not everybody can travel. Um, not everybody has the, the money and the funding to, to judge a contest. So, you know, we rely on each other and we rely on who's in our state, but also we rely on who we know. Um, so I think this year's slate of judges, I've really kind of picked some great people that I think are representing our community very fairly. And um, just like any other leather contest, you know, it's the standard categories uh, that we all like to see. But um, it's going to be a lot of fun and um, it's a lot of hard work. But I really my, the exciting part that I love to see is, you know, who actually gets the sash and then being able to see that person progress through the year and do good for the community and then hopefully represent the misfits at IML. Um, so it's, that's, that's the part that I enjoy a lot. Um, if anyone wants to, you can go check in the vault of my Instagram. My Instagram is LTJ is here and you can see the interview I did with Michael Cole, third, Mr. Third Coast Leather back in January. He was my fourth interview uh, of Throwing Light. So I just want to go ahead and kick that back. If you want to learn about my yeah. go down into my Instagram, you can find that episode there. Um, so please, I encourage you to do that. Kevin, the misfit. So like, you know, what, what, you know, how does the, how is the misfits impacting Houston or, you know, the, the Houston community? You all have a big community in Houston and um, we do. there's a lot of different things going on there. You know, how do you make yeah. yourself stand out in, the, in Houston with the misfits? Well, you know, we're, we're a small group and we, um, we, we've had some, some movement, you know, like any club, you know, people come in and people leave and, and that usually typically happens. Um, and so we're growing back to a bigger group. Um, you know, it's, it takes time. It takes time to cultivate certain people. And so, um, you know, there's a whole process with our organization, um, you know, you have to go through a pledge period there. Um, everyone has to vote you in. It's very fraternity. You know, it is definitely a leather fraternity. Um, 
but we enjoy each other as brothers and we stick together and that's what it's really all about. And we also have a lot of fun doing it. So, um, but the exciting part about, I think what the elders have always taught me becoming, you know, as I became president is first thing is being social. And then your second thing is fundraising. So we always put social first and we either do dinners or we do bar crawls or we just hang out with each other and we support each other too. And I think that's a big thing is, you know, your support group. So we're looking for new members um, and uh, it's a great organization to be involved in. You know, we have our brothers um, with NLA, our siblings, I should say, sorry, our siblings through National Leather Association, Houston, and then our siblings are, the uh, Bayou City Pups. So we all have um, those people kind of with our leather family here in our leather community here in Houston. So it is a big leather uh, community. Um, uh, it's exciting. Houston, if I'm correct, has the largest uh, gay population, like in, in terms of per capita, I think. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I thought it was. Houston has a very, I mean, Houston's a very, like, I don't think people understand. Houston's a very, like, cultured, diverse, yeah. um, classy, I would say. <laughs> so, you know well, we're, Yeah, so, we're a big it's foodie a classy town. city. Um, yeah. It's huge, yeah, though. The arts. I think people understand yeah. how big Houston is. You can drive, like, it, 30 I, miles. I call it the blob. Cause like it takes like an hour to drive <laughs> through Houston and it just gets bigger. And then you get into all the suburbs yes. and stuff like that. Houston is massive and it has nothing to stop it from growing. So um, yeah. it's yeah. big. We're 30 mile radius and I'm a native. So I've, I've been here my whole life and it's, yeah, it's 30 mile radius. We have over 6 million people living here. Um, yeah. We do have a large LGBTQ community. Um, we throw one of the largest um, pride parades in the nation. I think we're number two um, in the nation as far as just the amount of people that attend. Um, but we're a big foodie town and we're a big arts town. And um, I, it's funny because I think Houston is that kind of like laid back and, you know, doesn't really give a shit, you know, type of attitude where you've got a little bit of snobbery in Dallas, a little bit of weirdness over in Austin, you know, and San Antonio is always great uh, to visit. They're, they're just a great bunch of people over there. So um, we're excited. Um, I don't know. It's, how would I describe it? So like, so many of us Louisianans move to that area. So um I don't know. I'm always, I always feel like Texas steals Louisiana's culture and, and marks up the value of it. So I'm paying, paying is three times as much for crawfish over here when I can get it cheaper. Over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, All we of can East do Texas some is Louisiana. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, from Houston over all the way to to uh, El Paso, you know, is basically San Antonio in Mexico. So, <laughs> um, but it's, we're so cultural too. I mean, we, we've just, we encompass, I don't know how many countries in Houston that we represent. I mean, we've got so many different pockets around Houston. That's why I always tell people, you know, come visit Houston. There's something for everybody. Um, and I feel like everyone's just very welcoming and it's, it's home for me. So um, I, I live here understand. with. I mean, like Houston has as much diversity as New. I mean, not as much, but it is is trying. Like New York City has a, tons of diversity, but Houston yeah. has a lot of diversity too. And yeah. it has oil money and all these different people coming in. It's just, I think it really, it really conditions you to be around a variety of different people that you just you learn yeah. to coexist with everybody. Does that make sense? Like everybody in Houston yeah. is coexisting with no drama. Yeah. Well, I'm like Brian and I live, um, we live in a primarily Latin area of town and, you know, I go to the grocery store and I don't feel like, you know, anything's wrong. I think we all just kind of mix together in this big melting pot of the city. And it's just, I mean, it's great. Um, I don't feel unsafe in my city, so I never have. 
Um, but I, um, you know, there's always a rumors. Rep. About Houston it. has a, a, a has a pot has a good reputation. I think. I think Houston has. A I pot. think we do. I think we All do. Right. <laughs> hey, Kevin. So here we are. We're towards the end, and you've done this before. So you know what the last question is. Is there anything that you think that we need to shed light on that? we didn't shed light on this episode or something that you might want to bring up that you wanted to talk about last time you were on to whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. No, one thing that's been hitting me a lot lately is um, I'm dealing with um, some family issues and I'm dealing with um, kind of um, some of that. And I really feel like if I didn't have my support group or my support people around me, then I don't think, I could handle the stress and anxiety that comes with it. So I definitely think it's really important for us to check in with our brothers and our sisters and our siblings and make sure that not only are they physically doing well, well, are how are you doing mentally, you know, and emotionally? Because that, um, I think that's really important. Um, you, you know, I've, broken down many times over this last week and just trying to deal with this family issue. And, um, it's been really challenging. So, you know, we all, we all work, we all have things that we're, you know, having our hands in and we all have difficult family and mine certainly isn't, you know, bigger than anybody else's. But the point is, is just check in and just say, Hey brother, how are you doing? You know, let's right. talk for five yeah. minutes. You're absolutely right. Because mental mental health is important. And let me to piggyback on that. Don't y'all like don't what I've learned based on having a relationship with my and my brothers like Kevin and stuff like that is don't no one's gonna know something's wrong if you don't say something. And if you yeah. don't let people know, they can't help you. And yeah. I had to realize that no matter how scary it is to like bond or get close to people, because getting close to people has always been a fear of mine. But this is vulnerability. To, yeah, but this has taught me how to look. I I could I I could go in my head and pretend like I'm going at the world alone. But the reality is, is that there are people that want to be here and go through this thing called life together. And I want to just add to what Kevin has already said that, yeah, like having a, a good support group is so important, especially when you're in leadership, because uh, it can get yeah. lonely. And, I, and I've mentioned this before on many episodes. <laughs> leadership is not like, you know, you think just because people are surrounded or following you, it doesn't mean that at the end of the day, when you clock out of your leadership time, you're not going home alone. So it's just kind of right. like, you know, it, it's, it's you, we do so much and we give so much of ourselves to other people. And as a leader, we may sometimes forget to ask from that support back. Yeah. I mean, we, we really do. And, and I'm just, you know, I'm thankful that I have a husband who's very supportive I have my brothers um, in the leather community like you, you and Pedro and all my brothers from the Misfits, you know, I mean, people check on me, but still at the end of the day, you know, it's great that people are checking on you um, so that you don't feel alone, you know, um, but sometimes we need further help than what our friends and our family can give us. And that's OK, too. It's OK to um, get professional help if you need it. It's it's. There's no shame in that. And there's no shame in being vulnerable either. You know, if you need to be vulnerable, then you need to be vulnerable. I mean, I remember two years ago, um, I'm sorry, no, it was about three years ago, I was in a dark place and I had to be vulnerable. And I had to tell my husband, I said, you've got to help me tonight because tonight is the night that I'm not, I don't want to be here. So it's scary to even think about that. And I hate going back to that but I feel like if you don't talk about it, it's just that weird monster in the back of your mind that's always there that you're trying to cover up. So, you know, suicide prevention is very important, you know, in our community and um, making sure that we reach out to everybody and just check on them. If you haven't heard from them is really important. And um, it's okay to have feelings. You can be tough and you can be, 
you know, the most masculine as anybody else and still be vulnerable and still have your feelings. And it's totally okay. Um, it's totally okay to be your authentic self. That's awesome, Kevin. Thank you. All right, y'all. Well, yeah. that brings us to the end of this episode of Throwing Light. Glad to have Kevin back. I'm sure you want to keep seeing him because uh, he's not mm-hmm. going anywhere. The work continues. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kevin, for coming yep. on talking about the weekend. We will Absolutely. be back with more information at Blue Weekend as we get closer. But, y'all, that's it. And remember, I'm LTJ Reeds. This is Throwing Light. And Kevin, say it with me. If you're not throwing light, you're not, not light. Acting right. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you so much. Bye.